And uh, today uh, we are happy to have Nikita Nikrasov from the Simon Center, and he will speak about infinite dimensional uh, spin chains from gauge theory. Nikita, please. Thank you very much. So, um, okay, so uh, let me start by giving a lightning review of what is a spin chain. So spin chains uh, are quantum mechanical models. That is, you have some space of states, maybe a Hilbert space if you like it. Um, and uh, uh, a collection of operators which act on in the space of states and uh, so the the integrable quantum integrable case uh, is the case when you have um, a set of commuting operators and now um, so if h is, is if currently h is a Hilbert space you want these operators to be Hermitian otherwise well you just want them to be uh, reasonable maybe commuting with the joints uh, or something like that um, Uh, but we will not always require that. And uh, so you, the, 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 the system is called integrable if the number of those operators is large enough that you could uh, find the basis uh, of mutual eigenstates of Of these operators. Now, in order to qualify for to be called the spin chain, this space H has uh, to carry an, uh, an action of some uh, symmetry algebra, and typically it's um, so typically the word chain means that actually this this space is as a product of um, some rep representations let's say of some real algebra um, and in the classical example uh, of Heisenberg spin chain which was introduced in the late 20s, 1920s, so almost 100, well, a little bit less than 100 years ago. Uh, the Sealy algebra was, uh, well, for Heisenberg, it was actually SU2, but we will extend it to SO2, or GL2, maybe. Let's see, SO2, sorry. And, uh, for Heisenberg, this uh, each factor was just a two-dimensional uh, two-dimensional representation of the Lie algebra C two, or actually of the group C two, and uh, the operator H one, which uh, Heisenberg proposed, was essentially the sum over the sides, so from one to L. Uh, then you take the tensor product of uh, essentially, so it's a, what's called the split Casimir. So it's a, uh, can I write it? So 
So sigma sub a upper index i are the generators of SO2 acting in the in the factor number a of this product and one identifies uh, the last uh, with the first. So you should visual visualize this tensor product as being uh, constructed out of a, as if you had a chain of spins taking values plus or minus one half. Oops. Arranged uh, around the circle. And uh, well, there's a, there is a, there is a parameter uh, in front of the of this uh, operator which tells you whether if it's positive or negative, depending on whether it's positive or negative, it fails when spins are aligned or, or uh, point in the opposite directions. And, uh, it was soon discovered that there is a very, there is an, there is an ansatz for the eigenfunctions of this uh, operator and- So like this, that, so the number of arrows on the circle, which is the L, right, corresponding to the, the number is L, right. So the total number is L, but mm -hmm. the, so you. the number of states. So the, 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 this example, the this space of states uh, H is finite dimensional, and we're thinking of this as uh, L particles, right? An L particle mm -hmm. system. Well, these are um, L, really L spins. So when when you say particle. You usually uh, imagine that they can move around. So these guys cannot, they're, they're kind of frozen in, in position. Mm -hmm. uh, so they, the only degree of freedom they have is uh, the, the uh, state in the two dimensional space. And so the basis, so what I drew actually is that it's like a, it's a basis element. Uh, of, of the space H. So the total are two to the L uh, vectors there. Uh, so my, my sorry, my drawing is not is not actually very good because I, what I meant to say was that this guy is uh, also pointing up or down. <laughs> okay. Anyway, oops, that was too much. All right. Uh, so you have states, maybe so this is an example, an example of a state. Now, in this basis, this Hamiltonian, this operator H one, acts uh, in a trivial way. Uh, Basically, what it does, it's a sum of terms which permute the uh, permute the uh, the spins in the neighbor, at neighboring sides. So, um, but uh, so the discovery. So this is Heisenberg who proposed this model, and Hans Bethe found an ansatz for solving the eigenvalue problem. And since then, you know, the, 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 this ansatz and these generalizations are called uh, better ansatz. And it led to, so this is uh, 1930, oh, maybe 1933, dangerous year, but uh, 
after many, many years uh, of works by, by you know, great people, just mention Young, Baxter, Fadiv, um, Sklyanin, Tachtachan, Ripin, Rishitichin, and then Dreamfield. Uh, oops. Jimba, Niwa. So this, um, this became a great uh, story. In particular, uh, so one part of the story is that the SO2 Lie algebra, which acts uh, in, in, the, in the space H, actually enhances to the action of of an infinite dimensional uh, algebra, associative uh, algebra called the Youngian. Which is which is kind of a deformation of the uh, algebra of positive loops in SO two, so like polynomial loops in SO two. Uh, but it's not a, so it's not it's not a Lie algebra. The commutation relations are, are quadratic. And what's remarkable is that the space H is actually uh, an irreducible representation. It is not a reusable presentation of SO2, but it's, it's, it is a reusable presentation of, of the Youngian of SO2. And uh, Youngian contains a commutative subalgebra which contains the separator H1. So the, the quantum integrability of, of Heisenberg spin chain is uh, contained in this statement, this commutative subalgebra is large enough uh, to allow for the complete uh, uh, diagonalization or, or decomposition of H uh, in, in the sum as a sum of one dimensional subspaces, which are eigenspaces with respect to this commutative subalgebra. So, uh, so the ansatz, of beta represented this eigenfunction as a kind of a generalized sum of plane waves. So what, by plane wave, I mean uh, something like uh, an exponential And then you take uh, the state which has, uh, let's say, spins up everywhere except at the positions x1, x2, xn, with some coefficients. And uh, so, so this x variable is uh, takes only uh, l values, but the thing is, the point is that the kind of the, the dependence of the state on on uh, on the positions of this uh, inverted spins is exponential, as uh, as uh, as if you were solving the Schrodinger equation for let's say free particle whose Hamiltonian is just a Laplacian. And so uh, the, uh, 
this parameter of k, so the one, the one, the 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 things which multiply the the position of the exponent, the momenta, uh, turn out. So the, the the beauty of of beta ansatz is that they, these parameters, uh, or rather, after some small change of variables. So a goes from one to n. So n is a different. Uh, so n uh, is uh, it's a kind of a label of a type of a state. So the so the full space of states H splits as a sum over sectors n from zero to L. And then the dimension of n would be L choose n. And so this. Uh, this momenta uh, are shown to obey a system of algebraic equations. So these are here are the equations. So these are called beta equations. So you, no, nobody can solve them, of course, in general uh, for, for n greater than one, but um, people developed a lot of numerical techniques and studied them, for example, in the limit when n and l go to infinity. Uh, we prove some theorems, uh, so enumerate the solutions of these equations. Anyway, so these are some algebraic equations. And uh, so a lot of research is, is done in the direction of uh, well, analyzing these equations, finding that uh, how these equations generalize. So if you generalize the Lie algebra, so from SL2 to go to maybe more general ADE type, Uh, or even more recently, affine AD types. And various generalizations. Have been uh, found, for example, the individual spaces don't have to be uh, two dimensional, could be uh, arbitrary fundamental representations of the real algebra. Uh, in fact, even this can be generalized. And, uh, but, but also more importantly, uh, be because the underlying algebraic structure is the Youngian, the, uh, the classification of reducible representations is more sophisticated. So, so un unlike the, representations of the real algebra itself, which are classified by, let's say, dominant highest weight. Uh, suppose we talk, uh, let's say, talk, talk about integral representations. The representations of the young can depend on additional parameters. Uh, and so there are representations which are called evaluation modules. So they depend on so the input data for them are the uh, representations of a fine dimensional algebra and a complex number. And more generally, uh, so VI is uh, more, more generally, you can take tensor products of, of these things and for generic values of the evaluation parameters u, these kinds of products actually turn out to be also reducible, which explains the phenomenon which was um, observed for the Heisenberg model where uh, we didn't see this parameter u, in fact, it was equal to zero. So uh, already for SL2, 
So in the A1 case, the more general spin one half uh, spin chain depends on L complex numbers, U1, UL, and additional parameter we call Q, C star called the twist parameter. So uh, actually it's easy to explain what is, what is the meaning of the twist parameter. Uh, so the twist parameter modifies the periodicity condition, which I had before. So instead of saying that the generators of the uh, SL2 at the node uh, L plus one are not just equal to the generators at the, at the node one, but rather uh, a twisted, let's see, with the some uh, conjugation by by um, generic, well, by an element of the uh, of SL two group, which we can take to be in some. Maximal torus. So Q is the parameter which tells me how to twist the uh, uh, the generators of SO2 now going around the circle. So there's some kind of additional twist. Now these parameters Q are trickier to explain what they are. They they sort of uh, displace the positions of those particles. They they I mean, different spins sit at different, now have kind of different uh, location. So make this, uh, so they're called inhomogeneities. So think of them as displacing uh, spins from some equilibrium position. Um, So the way uh, this is obtained in a uh, more algebraic uh, way is to, so the-, the uh, I quickly ask, so the, those UIs are the Yongjin parameters for, for each of those uh, kinds of factors you are evaluating. So these UIs right? will be, yeah. so these are the evaluation parameters for- uh, Yongjin. Evaluation parameters. Okay. So, so the. Uh, so I understand that because you are doing this L plus. That that's the current the algebra, right? So that has a parameter. Okay, good. Yes. Right, 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 right. So, right. So, mm -hmm. so, so the basic uh, statement. So if I keep denoting by v the two dimensional representation of of uh, of S L two, the. Uh, the role of this U parameter is to say that the, uh, um, well, the, if I think of the generators of the Yangian as, as functions of, uh, it's, let me call it, sorry, as functions of one auxiliary variable, then uh, they roughly go like sigma A, sorry, bad, bad notation. In the, Uh, maybe level one generators of, of the Yangian will have the first order of pole at uh, z equals u. So that's that's the meaning of u. Okay, thank you. Now, so the way in algebraic patterns that the, these commuting operators are constructed is through the so-called R matrix. So you draw the, this the following picture. You think of the states of these individual spins as uh, 
leaning on the vertical lines, and these lines carry the uh, the evaluation parameter. And then there is an auxiliary space, which let me for the moment also take to be two dimensional, and also it it, it also carries the representation of the Yangian. And so there's the evaluation parameter x, and uh, every time, so I draw this picture when I have one horizontal red line crossing a bunch of vertical uh, black lines. And so every time I see a crossing, I insert the so-called R matrix, uh, evaluated at the difference of the parameters uh, meeting at the, at the point. And so when I cross the first guy, I, I insert the operator R of X minus U1, so this is the operator acting between the actually finite. So these are just the two kinds of products of two dimensional representations of SL2. I will not even write it down. It's a, uh, uh, so it's some operator which uh, which depends on 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 the on so called spectral parameter and it solves the young box equation. And so you take now, you do that for each uh, uh, crossing, for each intersection. So you produce an operator which acts from the tensor product of V of X tensor V one. Uh, to itself. And so then what you do, you insert the additional operator, which is this twist operator Q to the generator sigma three and take a trace. So take a trace in the V of X. Just forget it's V of X, just take a trace in the Auxiliary C2, we call it C2. And so now you print, so when I, now that I took the trace, I, I, I've got an operator, I've got a family of operators, which depend on X, called T of X. And the young box equation implies that the operators T of X commute for any values of X and X prime. So, this, uh, and this you can prove graphically by, uh, by drawing this picture twice and then moving things around using the fact that young box equation is really just a braid group relation. And so uh, draw draw this picture more carefully without actual crossing. So think of this as actually a projection of a, a configuration of links um, in three or even better in four dimensions project down to a two dimensional plane. Okay, and so the uh, the bottom line is that once you've introduced all these parameters, the uh, the equations which better tells you you need to solve to find the momenta uh, is deformed to
and what's uh, what's so beautiful about this equation is that this is identical to the equation describing quantum homology of the cotangent bundle to the Grassmannian of n-dimensional planes in the L-dimensional vector space. And so now the parameters U1, UL become equivariant parameters for GLL symmetry, which I, GL, so the group GLL, which acts on the Grassmannian. Uh, well, more precisely, it's the ratio of those parameters to the parameter H bar, which is the equivalent parameter for C star, which rotates the uh, fiber. What does N capital? Uh, so N, uh, so remember N was the number of better roots. So this, this is no, no, I don't one remember. N. Uh -huh. So it 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 uh, remember it was the so remember I said that my space of states decomposes as a direct sum mm. over n from zero to l and the dimensionality of of each component was the binomial coefficient l choose n which if you remember your Schubert calculus is also the dimensionality of the cohomology group. So then in 2D picture, your H is what the tensor product of uh, mm, number of C2s sitting, because yes. I mean, it's too, too much too much of physics. You just take finite dimensional representations of the Yangian for SL2 like evaluations mm -hmm. at some number of points, yeah. Once again, so yeah, so let this, so, so this is the tensor product of L evaluation representations of the Yangian where evaluation points are related to the equivalent uh, parameters of GLL. So yeah, uh, and, 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 cap and capital in this terminology. So you can decompose what? it. You can ah, so okay. it, it's, yes, it's uh, way decomposition. It's the decomposition with respect to the cartan of the uh, of SO2, you know, just okay. zero moles. So, ah, all right, all so right. HN is the eigenspace of, of cartan of with eigenvalue n minus L over two. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a, it's just the weight subspace. Uh Right, so that's uh, so it's a kind of a first indication that something is interesting is going on, relating the the presentation theory of the Yangian, and you know, all the interest that physicists originally had to it, with something uh, having to do with quantum cohomology, enumerative uh, geometry, and so on and so forth. And and this twist parameter is the uh, that's a quantum parameter for the quantum cohomology. So it is exponential minus the area of the symplectic form. Uh, oh, mi minus for, the, uh, so, uh, for mathematicians who see uh, the first time, but know something about quantum cohomology, who observed first that uh, actually this was... observed what? It's an interesting question. Because probably, if you mean given time, uh, I mean, mm, I'm not sure. No, it's not given time because. If... No, so what? So, uh, no, uh, of course, the fact that quantum cohomology is related to uh, quantum integrable systems, it was given time's observation, uh, but it was kind of a you know, general statement. It was all. It's it was almost a tautology in some sense. Uh, he he did find an interesting example, but uh, of uh, of the relation of a different kind. So he he found that, that he and his student, I think, they found that uh, the so-called J function. So it's not really quantum cohomology. Is something 
related to it. For the flag variety, complete flag variety solves a Bayesian equation, which is the which can be related to the uh, Schrodinger equation for for the open toda. So it's a it's a system of particles with some interaction, and so for him the quantum parameter was related to the uh, so it was a different different uh, sli slightly different story which we will today will connect I mean we will we'll have a uh, yeah but in what connection. sense in what sense this equation is equivalent to quantum cohomology is ah, this... okay okay so, so okay what is quantum cohomology quantum cohomology is a community fun. it's the uh well it's the um, community of algebra of uh, uh which lives over uh, the cohomology over the classical cohomology of the associated variety, and so here I'm talking about the so-called small quantum cohomology, when where the only parameter I'm interested in lives in the H two of uh, of the variety, so H two of my cotangent uh, to the Grassmannian is one dimensional, and so this is where the log of Q belongs so this is the this is the different deformation parameter so it's a uh, so quantum cohomology is community of associative algebra which deforms the classical cohomology ring of of your manifold the manifold in question being this one and the the deformation so the structure constants if you like if you wish of that algebra are defined by uh, counting uh, rational curves in, in, in this variety. So then what's the relationship of this equation? So so the statement is the following that that if you take the classical cohomology ring of, of so it's a covariant cohomology of cotangent to the Grassmannian, so it is generated by uh churn classes. Sorry, churn classes uh of tautological bundle okay, so if let's forget about the cotangent direction for a second so i have a rank a rank n bundle over the grassmannian which is i mean the plane which represents the point in the grassmannian is that that the fiber of this bundle and so it churn classes of this bundle uh, generate the cohomology ring. So uh, now simply write churn K of E as uh, uh, sum over A from one to N E to the lambda A. So this would be churn roots So classical cohomology ring of the Grassmannian can be described in terms of some algebraic relations on, on churn roots of the tautological bundle. Sorry, uh, this is the full churn, churn character, not churn key. I'm sorry. So churn K would be the sum, would be the power sums of lambdas. And now, if you look at this equation, it's an equation uh, which you can represent as by, by an equation on symmetric functions of lambda, lambdas, as you see, this equation is Sn uh, covariant, invariant. So the solutions of the equation gives the lambda a's, right? Right, so the solutions okay. of the equation gives lambda a's, and so they give you the spectrum of this algebra. So the spectrum, Of quantum cohomology ring is is the uh, uh, okay how should I say it's, it's ideal it's the this is the, the solutions of beta equations so you can think of this as follows so if, if I if Q goes to zero then essentially, if I didn't make a mistake, 
the equations will tell me that the set of n lambdas should be an uh, uh, cardinality n subset of the set of, uh, okay, so in the limit q to zero, lambda one, lambda n should be simply a subset of u one So you have uh, L choose N solutions associated with the uh, you know, choices, different choices of uh, N element subsets of this uh, set of, of uh, cardinality L. And these solutions are essentially fixed points, also known as coordinate planes. Uh, in Grassmannian of uh, the torus of the maximal torus of uh, GLL. And so this is inside G star. Now, if I turn on Q, so now the, the rules of intersection, I mean, the, the rules of the game uh, change. And so the the you know, this, the spectrum of this algebra will somehow change. Is, does that clarify the statement? Uh, for me, yes. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so, I, I mean, you. if you like, so the, in the very, in the, you know, just to remind you, so if you think about CPL minus one, so the usual algebra of, of the cohomology of CPL minus one is generated by the class of the uh, hyperplane section and a base uh, a base the relation omega to the power L is equal to zero. Now quantum cohomology deforms the to, to to that relation. And if you do simultaneously quantum and equivariant then you will get something like something like that. Thanks. This, two this ways helps ways a lot. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Sorry? Thanks. This helps a lot. Okay, good. Now, <laughs> sorry. So I, 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 I'm sorry I made this introduction very long. Uh, I'll speed up. So it turns out that it is better to study the beta equations, not in terms of the individual roots, but in terms of some sort of generating function, which you can now recognize uh, sorry, as, um, so this is essentially churn polynomial of the tautological bundle. And beta equations are equivalent to the so-called Baxter TQ relation, which says the following, that Q of, um, let me write it, sorry. So let me introduce another parameter, uh, polynomial P, This is called a uh, Dreamfield polynomial. So uh, bad equations are equivalent to the following relation that the polynomial P of X plus I over two So this is well by definition it's a polynomial. In X, but what is quite non trivial is that this polynomial is divisible by Q. So, 
So the fact that T of X is polynomial is, is, is the constant of the relation, of Bach's relation. Uh, so the equations which I wrote before can be rephrased uh, simply as, as this condition. And so uh, I will now maybe at the speed of light pass to a next level of an enumerative problem. So this was, so as I indicated, I mean, I did not explain it completely and in the proper theory. So this was observed by uh, Shadashvili and myself in, uh, oh my God. So maybe it was 2009. Uh, and then uh, a few years later, Molik and Okwinkov built uh, a kind of geometric representation theory of Youngians uh, using the uh, quantum cohomology. So they have a book called Quantum Cohomology and Quantum Groups. Uh, although it's a bit, uh, not, the, the name is a little bit misleading because what is quantum for quantum cohomology is this parameter, which is the, from the point of your quantum groups, groups is just a twist parameter. And the quantum parameter for quantum groups, I could put it here, is actually equivalent parameter for quantum cohomology. It's the parameter, it is actually, it's actually the one which was missing in the um, story because you actually need to study cotangent bundles or more generally holomorphic symplectic manifolds. So each bar is the symmetry of the fiber. Um, okay, so um, now what I'm going to, to, to tell you about is the infinite dimensional generalization of this story. I will do it in the simplest case of A1, although there are generalizations to any ADE or AD type or a fine AD. And so uh, let me first tell you uh, some novelty which happens at the level of representation theory of the Youngian. So this is still something about the Youngian of SL2, but we will be dealing with infinite dimensional representations, which I will now label um, in the following way. So this is, uh, so this is again the evaluation parameter. But these guys are two uh, parameters for an irreducible SL2 module. So, Nikita, uh, sorry. Uh, yes. Factor. I understand the two factorial is equal to two, but, yes, uh, but do you mean two factorial? It's exclamations. <laughs> yeah, that's what was my question. Right, right, it's right. exclamation. Okay. Yes, yes exclamation. So you see, we learn in the, in the quantum mechanics that representations of SL two are like representations of SU two, and they are labeled by one parameter, the Casimir. So the value of the um, Okay, depending on your taste is something like, okay, I may, I may maybe there is a two somewhere. Um, so roughly speaking, this is- yeah, this I, is I would divide h square by two, but hey, well, it's up to you, yeah, that's okay. Okay, okay, so some, okay, maybe up to, yes, so. Uh, so, there, so, there is this, so there is a quadratic Casimir which determines the parameter, which was usually called the spin. And so this parameter is there. And it's a complex, in general, it's a complex number. Uh, but in turn, well, but there is another parameter also complex, which uh, which is not, which does not affect the Casimir, but it's uh, kind of a, 
uh, we call it. So it's a kind of a, it's a midpoint of uh, of the spectrum of Cartan rate. So these are uh, so this module it has a basis labeled by. Uh, but they are infinite dimensional, so yes, no, yeah. nothing, nothing is integer uh, except right. of this. Okay. Right. So, so yes. So, so this module VSA, it's uh, so it has a basis uh, labeled by 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 all integers. So it's it's not it's not neither highest weight nor no lowest weight module, and so H uh, acts by essentially multiplication by n plus a. And uh, sorry for double E. Okay, let me go. Uh, oh, give me that. Okay, something like that. What I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to write, I'm trying to write uh, the following. So consider minus s uh, differentials in one uh, uh, variable acting on, and, and so uh, which are twisted by the eighth power. Uh, so they have uh, additional holonomy in going around the zero. So em. The vector n is it's this um, expression, and then you just do the usual uh, SL two transformation. So just take you know fractional linear transformation and expand it around zero, uh, around one. So that will give you something like that. Um, so for special values of S and A, these modules will be reducible. You could you could uh, truncate. You could choose submodules, but for generic S and A, this is it's an irreducible module. And so, uh, so now, so we take. Uh, but they are infinite in both directions. Yes, so the, 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 the R matrix probably will not preserve tensor product. Well, um, so the trick here is to. So, um, okay, uh, first of all, I apologize. I have for, for some reasons, uh, for GHT reasons, I will have to. Now change the notation from L to N. Now speaking about our matrix, uh, I will not. I'm not going to use the our matrix. Uh, I'm not going to use the universal R matrix uh, of general type. I'm, I'm still going to use the R matrix for the representations of spin one half. So just find the matrix representation. Oh, so it's essentially Denver. just a permutation divided by the parameter. No, no, it's not quite just. Well, it's, ah, okay. Uh, Go well, ahead. It's, it's, it's right. a non-trivial thing, but it's a. Uh, well, essentially, it is. Uh, what is it? It's uh, one plus. So it depends on x. So it x minus u, and then this is the two by two matrix, which is the two by two is for this factor. And uh, the entries of that matrix are uh, operators acting in this, in the space. So, in, uh, so they look like like that. Oops. Um. Right. So, uh, uh, so this is a our... stupid question. Uh, does it come from um, from the monodromy of type of Knizhnik Zamolodchikov equation? Well, okay. Um, no, 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 no. See, these are our matrices which depend on spectral parameter. 
So, so these are young Gamma matrices. The monodromy of Knilich's Malochikov give you our matrices without spectral parameter. Well, I can imagine different versions, yes. Uh, because mono, in, in any case, monodromy may be for some infinite rank mm, local system. It's still uh, a sort of a representation of a braid group, maybe infinite dimensional. So that's why I asked you. Yet. Well, okay. So let me just let me tell you what I know about about. So, so first of all, what's what's the statement? So the statement is that uh, there is a vector in this space. So there is some appropriate, you know, topological completion of this tensor product. And so there is a vector which belongs to this appropriate completion, uh, which, which is of course the eigenvector for. For the armat for the transfer matrix, which is which which is built in algebraic way as a product of of uh, our matrices and taking the trace in the um, in the two dimensional presentation, but I, 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 well, yeah, I, I'm a bit confused because the yes. transfer matrix is a K indeed in finite dimensional, but now the trace. Is it no, no, the trace is in, trace is in finite dimensional presentation. Ah, okay. The trace is in C2. And the transfer matrix acts in this infinite dimensional space. Okay. Now, but what, uh, so there's also Q parameter, which I uh, forgot to insert here. So it's, it's well, it's, uh, fees is slightly ab abuse the notation and then they don't, they, they 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 use the GL to twist, but it's it's not doesn't really it's not really a big deal. So, in some sense, there is a family of of vectors which which, which depend on this parameter with Q. Uh, so they are eigen vectors of the operators T hat of Q. So this is just a function. In fact, it's a rational function um, of degree zero. Uh, but the point, the main point, is that this vector is it comes from a from an enumerative problem. So let me just say in the, in the maybe in many terms, what is this uh, vector? So this is. Uh, so it's a sum. Psi k uh, it's an integral over the modular space of parabolic sheaves Uh, so, so the geometry here is follows. So we are suddenly we we work on the so on the com on the complex surface, which I will take to be P two. Sorry for not drawing it like P two. So this is P two, and there is a line that equals to zero, P one inside this P two, and there is another line which I call P infinity, which is. Uh, uh, which intersects the, that line transversely. And so we study the, uh, well, first of all, we study uh, torsion free sheaves rank N sheaves on P2, which are trivialized over the line at infinity. And uh, We endow them with the parabolic structure, which is a flag of sub of uh, so that the uh, rank of each consecutive factors is one. And so these sub are living essentially on P1 because uh, because this, this 
periodic kind of periodic flux structure. Uh, Can I ask? Uh, 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 did you fix? You so I assume that you fixed trivialization. Yes, the because the framing is fixed, fixed, so then you should say what happened with the flag. Right. So the, the I, I fixed the trivialization of infinity, and uh, the flag is so I've just it's allowed is allowed to vary it, and so so to vary, is allowed to vary. So this module space actually has many components, connected components. So this is essentially so this is the this is the sum over. Uh, in a lattice, P1, it's an N minus one dimensional lattice where Pi is essentially the first chain class of the uh, of the quotient, of the consecutive quotient. Uh, ah, so no restrictions on, on the flag, on the right. framing line, yeah. So right, these, and so roughly parameters. speaking, we take the generating function over over the first chain classes, and k is the uh, second chain class of the ambient shift. So this is the so this this k here, and so the parameters z, which are the uh, which we use in them when I when I identify this uh, uh, SL two modules with functions of Z twisted by some crazy powers. Uh, essentially, these are generating parameters for the for those first string classes, and it's just integral of one. Uh, now, uh, oh, sorry, not quite, not quite one. Sorry, I apologize. So uh, there is also uh, the first chain class. Sorry, the chain polynomial of. Uh, uh, of all of the uh, degree so that the dimension will be correct so, uh, yeah and so this will give me the uh, parameters s i minus a a and a a's are essentially the so a one a n uh, equivalent parameters for gl n uh, group which acts on framings so it acts on framings at infinity, uh, right, so, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, I lied again, I lied again. So these are the U parameters, the, the evaluation parameters, U1, U, uh, N. And so S minus A is the argument of the chain class uh, for the more space of parabolic shifts uh, on curve P1, on the red P1, and there is another, Object, which is the uh, so there is a so there is a bundle of uh, just essentially the sections of my uh, torsion free sheaf global sections of torsion free sheaf let me call it K and so I'm it's it's actually run K bundle over the module space of torsion free sheaves. And so I need to insert uh, another n factors of this chain polynomial, and that gives me the uh, missing parameters. So that way, I have three n parameters, n coming from the equivalent uh, parameters for framing, and two n coming from the so-called masses. So these guys are called masses. Nikit, you can call them whatever you like, but it's nice to explain uh, why this geometry appears at all. Because, you know, right. it's a black magic, I, I understand, but uh, uh, unless you say that, for example, uh, there is a representation theory of the, uh, uh, say, Yangian on some... No, that whatever. has not been constructed yet. No, no, this is... So this is... Uh, I'm, I'm giving you the statement of this thesis type that uh, I did some computation in um, uh, in Camo. So I computed some, some you know, in equivalent intersection numbers. So here I, I, I sketched what these numbers are. So these are uh, it's equivalent uh, uh, all your classes of, uh, of this modular space of parabolic shifts. 
And uh, then I prove that this object uh, is actually the eigenfunction. It's the eigenfunction of, of this operator T hat. I don't have the full Jungian representation theory in this setting yet. Uh, I don't how did theory. you prove? How did you prove it? I mean, what's okay, so what's that, idea? So the uh, right. So so uh, so the idea of the proof. Uh, build uh, yet another modular space uh, with some compactness properties. Compactness, <laughs> I just put it like that. Compactness means that uh, some integrals usually covariant, so equivalent integrals over that other modular space will be analytic regular functions of parameters, equivalent parameters. And uh, from that, from, from, from absence of poles, one gets, uh, Lots of equations, and so these equations then by by um, uh, they should imply rationality of the by judicial fact. work. Yeah, so well, uh, well, this so the, the equation, so the the absence of poles in the current parameters become differential equations, which uh, uh, after some work, especially of work of talented students, become equivalent to to these equations. So we don't actually construct the R matrix intrinsically, but we construct its uh, products, uh, pro, uh, sort of the produce of R matrix. We, we construct the traces of products. Uh, yeah, now, but it's really kind of strange. I mean, not strange. I mean, after Maulik and the Kunkov, uh, so why the point, you cannot the point, the point is that to interpret, so interpret the, uh, to interpret these uh, uh, high dimensional uh, geometry, so the counting shifts on, on, on surfaces, interpreting them as some kind of quasi maps uh, of, of P1 to maybe some infinite dimensional space uh, doesn't, I mean, it, it, it is not yet a common, how to say, it's not yet a common knowledge. So it's only, um, in the very simple case when it can be interpreted as just quasi maps to a fine Grassmannian, that's due to idea. So that's. Uh, this and is what is where... this? What is this infinite dimensional space, which you say? quasi maps so, to what? So so what, so you want to you, I want to you want to interpret the finite dimensional moduli space of torsion free shifts on the surface. Yeah, as, as quasi maps. Quasi maps of. Uh, this line, so this this red line, into yeah. something like the space of maps of this other line, you know, ah, the okay. particular line, okay. to okay. Uh, to the gauge group. Uh, but uh, you have more than that. So it's not just this loop space of the group, which is like a fungus mining, but you have uh, some infinite dimensional vector bundle over it, and maybe not always just the vector bundle. So. There is no general understanding what the space is, let and and when it will be somehow achieved this understanding. Then maybe a, a, a version of Maliko Kunkov theory of stable envelopes can be developed, but it has not been developed yet. So it's a. But these stable will, envelopes will be infinite dimensional. Yes, yes. No, these of course they, they, those those be, they, these are like. Uh, Middle dimensional uh, cycles in infinite dimensional space. It's not. I mean, it's not exactly un unfamiliar uh, to mathematicians who interpret you know, floor homology as uh, intersections of, of middle dimensional uh, half infinite infinite cycles. So it, it, it would be something of that sort. Mm -hmm. It's not. I mean, it's not not impossible. Just doesn't be normal. Anyway, I'm sorry. My my time is up.
No, 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 no. You can, you can feel free to go over time. So it's yeah, too sorry. interesting. I, I already it. felt free, but that's all right. <laughs> uh, okay, but <laughs> so feel double free. Uh, okay. <laughs> right. So, so um, okay, let me just say one more thing. So, um, okay, I, I was not completely, so the, 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 this surface P2 has an action of the two-dimensional torus, of course. And uh, to make things uh, quite you know, finite, you, you need to be equivalent respect to both, uh, to, 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 to the two-dimensional torus. And in this case, uh, I proved with Symbaluk that this function psi q actually solves an equation which looks like, which is exactly a Knizhik Zemologic equation. Uh, but it's a Knizhik Zemologic equation for the affine Lie algebra SLM. Where the level a plus n is essentially epsilon two or epsilon one. So these epsilons are equivalent parameters for the uh, C star cross C star. So then I return my question, yeah, which I asked. Now, here. now, so, sorry, sorry, but now they, uh, let me call it psi tilde. So it's, it's a fully equivalent object. And then, if I take limit epsilon two to zero, and so this is the, uh, so it's a limit when, so epsilon two is the uh, parameter for rotations transverse to the, uh, to the line with the, with the parabolic structure. Um, so in that limit, so psi q has some asymp exponential asymptotics, times a finite prefactor, and this prefactor is the eigenfunction of, of SO2 transfer matrix. So now you can repeat the question about the monodromy. Uh, yes. No, so I you see, so this is the SLN hat and uh, so the, the geometry is, uh, it's a four punctured sphere. So with, with punctures at zero, Q, one and infinity. And so the monodromy would be in making Q go around zero, one or infinity. So the monodromy would be a something which is independent of Q. Whereas my transfer matrix here depends on Q. So it's slight, it's a different story. It's a, See, it's a, and it's 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 a it's a young end of SL two, whereas the Knizhik homological was was for SLM. So sometimes this this is called bispectral duality. Now I really have to apologize, but I really have to be somewhere else. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, which means that you do not want to be free anymore, or what's it? <laughs> Uh, okay. uh, so uh, okay uh, all right uh, so uh, now it's time for questions for people kind of who wants to learn more uh, 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 by the way uh, uh, I understand that you know some kind of a little bit and prepare, but can you email them after your talk to me and we will attach <laughs> okay. your your notes to, to, to this video. Right. So Sorry. okay. So, okay, questions please. Uh let me ask a quick question. So in the middle somewhere where you change the L into N, but N was yes. counting something else. And uh, now the because the Right, so, so L the trick here is in, that in the what played the role of L for the uh, Grassmannian is now played by N. So N is, so this is the kind of the rank of the, the ambient sheath is rank N. So when, when you think about the uh, Grassmannian, 
quasi maps to the cotangent of the Grassmannian, uh, essentially they're described by a flag of bundles, of vector bundles over P1. So that's the source of quasi map. And the maximal rank bundle would be of rank L, the ambient space. So the you know, quasi map to the Grassmannian is essentially a uh, rank N sub bundle inside the rank L fixed bundle. And so now I have, instead of rank L, uh, instead of one sub bundle, I have the whole flag and not bundles, but shifts, uh, but the ambient shift has rank N. So it plays the role of. So now you are, instead of considering the gross menus, you are considering the flag variety. And so the, the analog of summation over, over N, which we had in the previous case, is the summation mm -hmm. over the charges, over various charges. Okay. My second question is that in the SL2 case, that you defined this infinite dimensional uh, VSE uh, using the fact that uh, uh, SL2 is acting on the function algebra uh, through Mobius transformation. So when well, you. It's a, uh, it's, so Mobius transformation is, would be, of course, for the group SL2. And, yes. Uh, uh, for the group, uh, uh, you need to do. So because I have these complex powers of the variable Z and its differential, the group That's actually right. is not defined. But if you take a formal expansion near uh, ABCD equal one, um, you will get the Liot fraction. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering in the higher, in, you, you, at the end, you wrote uh, SRN hat. Uh, is that uh, just uh, replacing the GRN, finite GRN, or into the, by the affine? So, so the thing is the following. So you have the or tensor replacing product SR2. <laughs> but... so you have tensor product of N factors. Uh -huh. Each of them is essentially of the size of a, a space of functions of one variable. Mm -hmm. So together, if it's like it's uh, you have a space of functions of n variables. That's right. So you have the action of SLN. It's slightly more complicated because the conformal blocks are actually. Uh, they, they oh, are, so this the SLN is exactly the number n here is the number of uh, tensor factors. Yes, precisely, precisely. But mm -hmm. but it's the SLN actually doesn't act on them in this way. It's. Uh, uh, this space of functions of variables is actually the space of invariants in the tensor product of four SLN okay. modules. Uh, I didn't have time to explain this uh, mm -hmm. in detail. Maybe you invite Simbaliuk and he will explain. It. Maybe you already have. Okay, so so in that sense, so what happens if you replace the uh, original SL two with a two dimensional vector space and two dimensional natural representation? But some other, but some other uh, simple D algebras with a fundamental. Yes, uh, so that, 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 uh, that has been done. So in, in this case, in the loop algebra, I don't know how that uh, infinite dimensional vector space, infinite dimensional representation you would construct. Well, for, for um, okay, so for, uh, so there are two types of generalization. So one generalization is when you, uh, so if you replace SL2 by general ADE algebra. That's right. On the Grassmannian so the, the question is how, how does the D algebra act on the function algebra? Because um, in SL2 case uh, that uh, uh, look at your, your action on those infinite dimensional space is uh, incorporating the action of the S natural representation of SL2 and with the SR2 action on the function algebra or the loop by through Mobius transformation. Because in the higher dimension case, we can't use Mobius transformation anymore. Okay, so so what is known is how these modules generalize to GL mm -hmm. So there are so there are the analogs of the uh, of these modules uh, for GLN which are realized in functions of n variables, essentially, maybe n minus one. N minus one, yes. For SO2, I had one variable, so for, GL, for SLN, I will have N minus one variable. So essentially, these are you take a monomial, you take a general complex degree monomial in N variables, and you multiply it by any degree zero uh, Laurent polynomial. 
So that's this is this place of functions in which it, it is realized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for other uh, Lie algebras, I don't know. I don't think uh, these modules exist. And I, I'm not saying that that's the statement that uh, uh, we are getting. The generalization to other Lie algebras is, is of slightly different nature. I, I, I didn't have time to explain yeah. it. It has to do with uh, uh, studying the so-called quiver, the module spaces of quiver shifts. So these are for each node of a quiver, you have a uh, modular space of torsion free shifts of certain rank. And then for the edges, you have some, uh, uh, you put uh, bundles of homes between different shifts. So, I, see, I see, I see. So for example, for... And then you can define parabolic structure for each node of the quiver. So, mm -hmm. so uh, Nikita, but uh, like in your finite dimensional story, you mentioned Maulika Kunkov, but you didn't formulate the precise result about the uh, eigenfunctions for commuting Hamiltonians. Do they have mm, similar geometric description as in the case of infinite ch ch spin chains? Uh, eigenfunctions, uh, yes. So, so uh, well, so, so there is some analog of 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 uh, of fixing a parabolic structure at the device. So basically, what you, you study quasi maps with the now additional condition at a point, or maybe a collection of points of of your source curve. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, for example, if I, if I study quasi maps to the Grassmannian, now I want to specify that uh, at at one point on my source P one. I actually have a flag of uh, inside the n-dimensional space. Mm -hmm. But it will be really a flag of vector spaces, not a flag of shifts in, in this case. Well, it's a flag of vector spaces. Uh, in, but over the, over the you know, modular space of quasi maps, they will form a flag of shifts. Yes. So true. out of that, you construct some classes. No, I mean that... Uh, for this infinite chain story, you have some infinite dimensional representations of Youngians, and for some, uh, mm, for some values of parameter, they have finite dimensional factors, mm -hmm. which probably uh, give you some answer. Oh yes, yes. So you are you asking you asking how uh, can one embed the finite dimensional story into mm -hmm. this infinite dimensional one? Yep. Uh, yes. Uh, it has been, uh, well, it has not quite been developed, but uh, people found ways of uh, truncating, uh, I think this infinite dimensional story can be truncated at least not to find dimensions, but at least to the highest weight modules. So you can, so before you go completely mm -hmm. to find dimensions, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. Yeah. slightly, you, you can go halfway by replacing these indefinite modules by uh, lowest weight modules. So that's, uh, that that was done. And that essentially means imposing kind of restrictions on distortion free shifts that they, basically they don't grow. I mean, they, somehow they should be trivial in one dimension, in one direction out of two. So, so if they, if you think about the, this uh, this uh, shift as a basically direct sum of ideal of shifts of ideals, mm -hmm. just and and shifts of ideals, then you want the support of these ideals to be, uh, uh, you know, all on, on this red curve. So you don't they don't mm -hmm. allow yeah the, oh, I see I see I see points to go into the second direction. So then th life becomes eff so effectively one dimensional and looks like quasi maps into something fine. Yeah, dimensions. but uh, okay, my mask is sort of very mathematical yes. question. You know, it's about generalization. So if I start with a uh, quiver, with quiver, some general quiver, and consider this quiver shifts moduli spaces together yes. with, okay. So what's, uh, do you have a general conjecture 
for uh, generating functions similar to the one no which... unfortunately no no I, I don't i don't you know there is some uh something uh okay so something in, in this computation which i've been doing so far was really specific to the a type so, so some something bad happens for d and e type so there, there are so you can define the modular space of parabolic quiver sheaves. Yeah. Indeed, so th they make perfect sense. Uh, but uh, I so that definition which works for any any quiver for the A type it gives something it's, it gives something else not not the thing which I, I studied so far. So I cannot so you, my techno my technology my tools don't allow me yet to. To compute this energy function for even for the A type, it's uh, uh, yeah, but for A type at least you have some. It's a different. It's a it's a it's a different. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, how to say this? So, so, so yeah, you you do not have uh, an independent kind of conjecture. That's yeah. If you had a representation theory which you mentioned, right. Yeah, then probably you would have some kind of yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah so I would expect it's it's still it's like a function of some of some spin chain based on 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 the quiver algebra, but I don't know yet. Uh, I don't know what type of representation uh, to expect. Actually. And that's related to the question which. Uh, yeah, and probably uh, and, and another mathematical question: uh, you probably can replace uh, Youngian, but by quantum of fine algebra. Yeah, that's or... that's easy. That's that's cheap. That's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just... uh, Although, sorry, so it's cheap in terms of the conjecture. So I mean, even you can I can even replace it mm -hmm. by elliptic uh, uh, quantum group. But again, my tools are not strong enough to, to, to prove this conjecture. So here, at least, okay, today, maybe my notes were not well prepared and my statements looked uh, shaky, but at least I guarantee that, that these are mathematical statements. <laughs> so it's, it's a theory. Uh, uh, for quantum uh, affine case, quantum loop case, and for elliptic case, I mean, I know people now develop algebraic tools using toroidal algebras, but they develop them on the algebraic side. They don't know much about the intersection thing. So. Yeah, yeah, I think Nigut did something for, uh, but okay, you, you should ask him, yeah. Uh, 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 okay. And by the way, the bulk of uh, what you explained today, is it one paper or it spread in, in several papers? It's uh, or it, even if it, it, it's, it's it, a, well, the no, the bulk of what I explained is probably introduction just to one paper. But <laughs> and we, which one? Which one is it? Okay, I'll I'll send you the the numbers. Yeah, okay. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. I have to go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. So then, then thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Mm. All right. So, well, since we do not have speaker speaker anymore, so that's time to 